Can y'all hear me through this? <laughs> I know y'all can see me. <laughs> well, we just praise and thank God. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. To see your beautiful faces. You know, nothing Bring it cannot. Down a little bit so that thing won't block it. Yeah. There you nothing go. cannot stop. <laughs> Amen. The power of God in our lives. Amen. Not even COVID can stop the power of God. Whatever we got to do to make it happen, guess what? We're going to make it happen. We're going to show up and show out in the name of Jesus. So we're glad that you're here this morning. Brother Eric, it's so good to see you. You got my girl with you. All right. Amen. Keep up the good work. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Amen. Well, we love you and God bless you. Um, I'm going to be reading out of the scripture out of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, and this is uh, uh, Apostle Paul talking to the uh, church in uh, Thessal uh, Thessal Thessalonian church, amen. Says, uh, talking about called to holiness. This is what we're called to. We're called to holiness. And holy is, holiness is not what you wear and how you look. You, know, you can't wear no makeup, you can't wear no hair, you can't do this and you can't do that, you gotta, can't wear no pants. That is not holiness, amen? So, in, um, um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse uh, 9, called to holiness, it says, But as teaching brotherly love, ye need, not, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Amen. And indeed, ye do it toward all brethren which are in Macedonia. And I'm going to say which are in Phoenix. How's that? To all brethren which are in Phoenix. And it says, But we beseech you, brethren and sisters, that ye increase more and more. Verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands. As we have commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward toward them that are without, and that ye may may have lack of nothing. Amen. So this is what we're called to do. Amen. We need to study to be quiet, because so many of us just want to just keep talking and talking and talking. Do your own business. This is this is the word of God. Do your own business. And work with your own hands. So if we're called to holiness, this is what we're going to be doing. Amen. So we just praise and thank God that you're here this morning. We love you so much. We missed you. Praise the name of Jesus. We missed you. And like everybody always tell me, say, well, Miss Craig, what are you doing? I say, I'm just tired of not dressing up. <laughs> I haven't worn heels in five and a half months. So I put on some yesterday. My ankles hurt me so bad I had to come down. <laughs> so I just praise and thank God that I'm in some heels today. Amen. But they're comfortable. But we're going to be working on these ankles because I will refuse to be defeated. <laughs> Amen. I'm a true woman of God. So I just praise and thank God for you. We love you so very much. And we just know that God is going to continue to, to uh, strengthen you and love you. And you all keep doing what Jesus has called you to do, to love one another. We love you and God bless. All right. Okay. Praise God. Come on, give God some praise, everyone. The Lord is good. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's been almost about five months since we've been here. But you know what? The, this is the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it, praise God. And so, um, you know, again, we want to thank God for all of you that some of you are new here that we never met, but thank God for, for getting a chance to be with you also. And, you know, uh, soon and very soon, praise God, we're going to be able to invite all the members back, amen? And because we're still, we're still focused. And nothing has changed in, in the spirit realm. Everything God said they're going to do, he has already done it. I, I'm, I'm not going to say everything God said he's going to do, he's going to do. I'm going to say everything God said he's going to do, he's already done it. Already. All we got to do is come in line with it, amen? amen. So again, we want to give God thanks for Pastor L and Noel. Give them all the hands for them, amen? Give them all the And then all of the leaders that are here, you that have continued on, even during this coronavirus, you continue to persevere, yes. amen, through all this right here that's been going on, praise God, and, and many of you that have... You that are online, a lot of our members that are online right now also, I am members. I thank God for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Because like I said, you know, a lot of people are falling off during this time. And, uh, but, you know, thank God you've not fallen off. Amen. 
even though you that are still watching online, and plus all of you that are, are that have been coming here, uh, thank God for each of you. Praise God for staying staying steady. Yeah. Amen. God said, though you walk through yes. the valley of death, you ain't gonna stay there. Right. You're going through that thing in yes. Jesus' name, and you're coming out of victory. Victor. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for each of you today. I, I want to greet all my Facebook audience. Also, all you that are watching by Facebook, God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. We are in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and so we're excited. I'm excited. You know, at first, I was not, I, was, I didn't know whether I was going to be able to make it today. Uh, today. You know, so the Spirit of God gave me a word. He said, I want you to teach this particular word there. So I said, I guess I am going. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, so, you know, and so the word that I'm sharing with you is, is something God specifically told me to share this morning uh, with you all. Amen. And, uh, and, and, you know, how it's going to apply each of your lives may be a little bit different. Right. But the whole goal is I'm trusting God that it's going to apply in your life in a way that's going to cause positive change. Amen. 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 Especially now, since so much is going on out there in the world. You know, you got the corona, you got the corona, coronavirus. <laughs> you got the coronavirus, praise God. Uh, you have the, what's that, uh, unemployment. You got uh, our presidents uh, trying to vie for who's going to be the next leader. Amen. You got, you got people fussing on how much money they're going to send on the next stimulus check. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And the whole goal is, 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 is it pushes you, if you're not careful, in a state of, un, of uncertainty. Amen. And, and it's important for us to understand that, 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 that we, don't have to, we don't have to live in an uncertain world. We, we can live in a certain world because the world I'm talking about today has not changed. I said the world I'm talking about has not changed. The world I'm talking about the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I don't know what world you're living in. Maybe you may be living in that world that's sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes almost level to the ground. But the one I live in, he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So, again, we thank God for you. Now, now the lesson I'm going to teach you today, this, this, I'm going to teach this lesson God gave it to me. He said, teach on the voice of faith. Amen. On the voice of faith. Yes. Yes. Because some of, if you're not careful, you can go from I'm more than a conqueror to I'm not sure if I'm a conqueror or not. Or you can go from all things work together for the good and the love of the Lord. Say, I'm not sure if these things work together for my good right now. You don't know what I'm going through. But God says that the teach on the voice of faith. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today because, you know, myself personally, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you go through different things in your life. And, you know, like I know when I first went fully into the, uh, the apostles ministry, you know what I mean? It was a total new world for me. It wasn't, wasn't totally new. Because I've been functioning in that office for quite a while, but never totally leaving the pastorate to do it. And really just stepping out totally, you know, on the apostles' ministry and things like that. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, releasing everything here over to Pastor Alan Noel, which, which y'all have done a wonderful job. All of y'all have done a great job. Praise God. Ain't no complaints at all. I've not looked at one paintbrush. I've not put no carpet down. I ain't did nothing but just came here and, and watched y'all win. I love it. Amen. Praise God. It's a great blessing. So, so, so it was a whole new world for me. Whole new world. Different world for me. Then being in Las Vegas, ain't got no secretaries. Ain't got no helps ministry. I don't have no, uh, I don't have no security. I don't have no, uh, I don't have no, uh, uh, I ain't got hardly nothing. But, but Pastor, thank God for burying no, and I still have moved all the way to Vegas to help us. Amen. <laughs> Well, other than that, all our, all our help is here. But our helper has not left. Are y'all following me? So you learn to trust in God on a whole other level. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. And, uh, and, it, and it's, it required me to, to learn the internet better. <laughs> amen. Well, I had, well, I had to learn how to, I had to learn how to get on Facebook and, uh, and create my own flyers and, and, uh, and get on YouTube and, 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 uh, and uh, Instagram and all kind of different things. Praise God. But, you know, I'll be 67 next month. But you know what? A lot of folks done settled down. Not next month, but in January. Uh, but, uh, and a lot of people done settled down. But, you know, God said, no, you, no, no, no. You're still in a learning mode. The moment you stop being teachable, you start dying. And I've learned, you know, ain't, ain't no dying here for quite a while. Praise God. So we got, got too much to do. To be settling down, amen? amen. We, learn, we, we, learn to walk, we learn to work smarter, but not harder, amen? So I'm excited about being here today. And so this message again is called the voice of faith, where God wants you to keep your voice strong, amen? 
So number one, I'm going to say this, the, the voice of faith, me, what is the voice of faith? The voice of faith, number one, is, is your voice, is you voicing the word of God in the earth over your problems. Come on. Come on. The voice of faith is you voicing the word of God right. in the earth over your problems. Because God said, whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so the voice of God, that is you voicing the voice of God, everybody say in the earth, in the earth. over your problems. See, so you can either say, oh my God, y'all don't know what I'm going through. Lord, don't move my mouth and give me the strength to climb. No, the voice of faith is you voicing what the word says. Amen. That I am who God says I am. Uh -huh. I have what God says I am. Uh -huh. I'm not going to get into self-pity. Right. I don't need nobody to feel sorry for me. Amen. Are you following me? Uh, uh, Mark chapter number 11 and verse number 23, it makes this statement. For This is Jesus talking. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, is anybody a whosoever in here? Yes, whosoever, whosoever shall what? Say, or you can say voice. You know, lift your voice unto this mountain and say what? Be removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Two, two instances. You believe what you, uh, it said in, and shows, uh, 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 say to your mountain, is that right? Not talk about your mountain. Say, say to your mountain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some people do this time. Well, you're a child. You just don't know all of them. No, no. Stop talking about your mountain. Okay. He said you shall say to your mountain. Your mountain. Amen. Amen. You know, like some people, you, know, you, you, you bad. So I, I ain't got to talk about you. I can talk to you. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Come on. You, know, you ain't got to talk about me. I talk to you Amen. face to face. That's what's about your mountain. Stop talking about your mountain. Mm -hmm. Face off. And it said, talk what? To you. And what is the mountain? Your mountain is anything in the physical realm standing in your way. Anything in the physical realm standing in your way for pro from progress. He says, be removed and be kept to the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, but shall believe that those things which he voice, voice, is that right? Shall come to pass. He shall ever, he shall have whatsoever he voice. Whatsoever he say. Because see, words, all words are thoughts that's given voice to. Come on. Come on. So you can you can be around thinking about what you should be doing, but those words in your mind, unspoken, will die unborn. No matter how good they are, no matter how powerful they are, your, those words in your mind, those thoughts in your mind, those intents in your mind, never given voice to, will die unborn. He said, you've got to start saying it. You've got to start giving voice to it. So the voice of faith is not just high hopes and dreams. The voice of faith says, it's mine right now. The thing for which I have finally hoped is at last mine, whether I see it, whether I feel it, or presently possess in the natural realm, the voice of faith says it is mine in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. So what I'm voicing is not what I see, the, I'm voicing what I don't see. Because my faith is the substance contained in my words are the substance of everything I've been hoping for contained in my words and in my voice is the evidence of things I don't see but my voice is I already got it my voice is it's already mine my voice says everything that I hope for my voice declares it is mine right now Healing is mine right now. Uh, he is the Lord that healeth me. He takes sickness and disease out of my midst. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from all my destructions. Praise God. By his stripes I was healed. That's the voice of faith. The voice of faith that said, well, I don't know. Let me see. Even though this is true, over 6 million people have caught coronavirus. That's, that's true. Oh my God, over, uh, uh, over uh, 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 I think 180 have died. That is true. But it's not the truth. The truth is, I will take sickness and disease out of your midst. 
The truth is, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The truth is, he sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. The truth is, by his stripes, I'm not going to be healed. I was healed. So whatever the devil is promoting out there, I'm going to honor the, CC, the CDC rules. I'm going to wear my mask. I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, social distance. I'm going to do all those things. But I want you to know the truth is, by his stripes, I'm healed. So I'm going to honor everything, but I'm going to walk in the truth, not just things that are true. Because I live by a higher law yes. called faith. Yes. That is the semblance of things I've been hoping for. The evidence of things I don't see or presently feel. But I'm walking by faith yes. and not by sight. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. So, so why do we need the voice of faith? The voice of faith is the bridge between the natural and the supernatural realm. Yes. The voice of faith is the bridge between the natural and the supernatural realm. In other words, faith is not complete if all you do is believe. You must add your voice to your belief. Y'all get that? Faith is not complete if all you're doing is, well, I believe they ain't going to get better. Yeah, all right now, but, but, but what's going to get better? But what are you going to voice? Because God, God can do anything until you voice what you believe. And your words locate what you really believe. I'll say it again. Your words locate what you really believe. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 said, We have in what? The same. Everybody say spirit of faith. So I have a spirit of faith. It says, As it is written, I what? Believe, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Until you speak it, what you believe don't make no difference. I'm going to say it again. Until you speak it, what you believe don't mean nothing. The devil believes. But the devil, but, but the devil got his words mixed up. Huh? But, 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 but see, so believing is not enough. You got to get a voice of faith. That I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Whether or not I'm presently feeling it or seeing it or not. My, word, my circumstances does not tell me who I am. God's word tells me who I am. And when I stand on the word of God in spite of my circumstances, my circumstances will rise to the level of God's word. So, so to be effective... My faith must be in two places, in my heart and in my mouth. Let me say that again. To be effective, my faith must be in two places, in my heart and in my mouth. It is not enough to be in your heart. It's got to get in your mouth. And that's why you got to watch. You know, I... I watch the news just enough there every day to get information. Yes. But if you're not careful, listen to that stuff all day long, you'll be all confused. Yes, you'll be hoping that God will, but afraid that he won't. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Number, 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 to, so to do anything in faith, faith needs a voice. The world was created by the voice of faith. The book of Genesis chapter number one. And verse number one, in the beginning. Uh -huh. Anybody got a beginning in here? Yeah. See, I'm saying today your world begins again. Yeah. Today is the new beginning of your new beginning. Yeah. That all, I'm claiming crop failure on all the negativity yeah. you've spoken. Yeah. As of today, all the words you've spoken up to this point, negative, is crop failure in Jesus' name. Yeah. And today is the new beginning of your new beginning. Yeah. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Uh -huh. But what happened in verse 2? The earth was without form and void. Right. Sometimes your beginning gets without form and void because the devil got in that thing. Darkness upon the face of the deep. Corona's out there. Unemployment's out there. Confusion is out there. Yeah. There's dark in the earth today. He said, but, he said, in the spirit of God, come on, come on, come on. begin to move. Upon the face of the waters. Can I say right now, in the midst of all this is going on, the Spirit of God is moving. I said the Spirit of God is moving. But guess what? 
Even though the Spirit of God is moving, ain't nothing happened yet. Because the Spirit of God moving, no matter how powerful the Spirit of God is moving, nothing still ain't changed. The earth is still without void. The earth is still without form and void. God the Father is still upon the face of the deep because even though the Spirit of God is moving, nothing changes until that next step happens. And verse 3, and God said. Until he voiced it. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Nothing changed until God said it. Nothing changed until God voiced what he wanted to see, not what he saw. Say it again. Nothing changed until God said what he wanted to see, not what he saw. If you want to see what you want to see, you got to stop seeing, saying what you're seeing. Well, child, you know my back been hurting me all day long. All right, you're saying what you're feeling. So it's getting worse. Because you're voicing your doubt. And when you voice your doubt, the devil said, gotcha. You're snared by the words of your mouth. You've been taken by your words. I now have legal right to inflict you with pain on your left hand side now. Man, I think I'm going to give you some little author too. Since, since, I, since I can put something in you and I can, I can cause something physical to happen in your life and cause you to start voicing it. Because you're not voicing your faith, you're voicing your fears. But, but Doc, I, I, I really feel like that. I know you really feel like that. But nothing changes until you start saying what you want to see, not what you are seeing. You got to get on, you got you to get the voice of faith. God's voice of faith is the constructor of the universe. His voice gave his voice gave origin to all that became seen right now. Hmm? The origins of all to all things became seen through the mouth of God. Even though the Spirit of God was hovering over the earth, nothing still happened. Until God spoke it. Right. Hebrews 11 verse number 3 says this. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How are you going to frame your world today? By the word of God. By putting God's word in your mouth. So that the things which are. No the things which are. Seen. Were not made by things which appear. See, so a long time of what's appearing ain't nothing going to change. Right. For the things that are seen were not made by things that you can see. It was made by words. See, the spirit realm is, uh, is more real than the physical realm. Because that's where God lives. The spirit realm is the real world. The physical world is the effect of the spirit realm. God is a spirit. So therefore, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But out of your spirit, man, speaking spirit words, physical things happen. Yeah. Come on, man. Say it again. Come on. Are y'all following? Yes. Now, uh, the Barclay, this is another, this is another translation called the Barclay's New Testament translation says this. It is, it, it is by faith mm -hmm. that we understand the universe was constructed by the word of God for the seen had to take place, had to take its origin from the unseen. The seen had to take its origin from the unseen. Until the unseen, until God spoke the words, the seen could not happen. Because the seen depended on the unseen to come forward. You got to get a voice. Everybody say, I have the voice of faith. So I speak what I believe based on the word of God. Huh? The moment you begin to voice your faith, heaven will move on your behalf. The moment you begin to voice your faith and not your fears. And that's shaking sometimes. 
in, in the midst of, I mean, real problem, corona ain't, it's not fake. It's real. Uh, yes, it is. Unemployment is not fake. All that's real in the field. It's real. Yes. Listen now. So you're not denying the existence of the real. You are only refusing this right to dictate your life. Come on. I'm saying it again. You're not denying the existence of the things that are going on in this world. You're just refusing to dictate their right to dictate your life. Because you're walking by faith and not by sight. Huh? Now, this is for some of y'all. I don't know who this is for. Maybe one, one of y'all. Maybe one of y'all today. But God told me, I want you to, this is the word I want you to give. I want you to give this word at this church today. And to you that are on Facebook, this word is coming to you. Everybody listen right now. The word is to you today, right now. The, this is now. The voice of faith commits God's integrity to deliver and perform everything he said in spite of the process. The voice of faith commits God's integrity to deliver and perform everything he said in spite of the process. I don't care how dark it is. When you begin to move in faith, God now is committed by his integrity. He got to perform it. He said, if I spoke it, I'll break it good. If I said it, I'll accomplish it. Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the place wherein to I have sent it. And can I say today as an apostle of God, God has sent this word to you today. I said, God has sent this word to you that's been looking for a job. It's coming to you right now in Jesus' name. Voice the faith, the faith I ain't going to get no job. I have a job. I have a better paying job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The voice of faith. The voice of faith dares the unbearable. The voice of faith thinks the unthinkable. And the voice of faith moves the unmovable. So I have the voice of faith. So never hesitate to voice your faith in the midst of adverse circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now the devil would love to keep us quiet. Well, you know what? I'm just not into all that. I'm just kind of quiet. No, you ain't. Listen, my child, take your kid. Now, child, let me do this. Now, look, I will fight you. I thought you was quiet. I thought you was quiet. How about somebody try to steal some of your money? Now, look. So you ain't quiet. You, you, you ain't been touched enough yet to speak up. But when you get sick and tired of getting of being sick and tired, you get sick and tired of that of Arthur visiting you every morning. You get sick and tired of, of, of being defeated in your life. You get sick and tired of, of, of being turned down for jobs. You get sick and tired of all this. And you, you said, devil, enough is enough in Jesus' name. I'm gonna speak up. I'm gonna start busting my faith. I have my house. I have that car. We have 300 members this year. Come on, come on now, y'all get with me. I said, we have 300 members this year in Jesus' name. But Dr. Greg, how are we going to get 300 members? Look, that's, uh, that, that's God's problem, not ours. My, my job is to voice it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. The voice of faith empowers you to command results. I said the voice of faith empowers you to command results. It draws on the power of God to impact your life and bring about change in your life. So again, the voice of faith empowers you to command results. Now I'm going to show you this. Now, this is good I want to get to today. This is good I want to get to. Because I want to show you here that the voice of faith, hope you, hope you get what I'm saying. The voice of faith don't have to wait on God. Come on now. All right, now hold on. Hold on to your horse. Tighten your saddle up. 
Tighten your saddle. The voice of faith does not have to wait on God. Well, I'm waiting on God to mention. No, no, no. The voice of faith does not have to wait on God. Come on, tell it. Jesus. You know, like when, when David came into the lion, he didn't say, I think um, sometime the Lord going to get you. I'm waiting on the Lord to show me how I'm going to uh, uh, get, you, get your head off. I'm waiting on the Lord to kind of give me some wisdom and give me some insight on how to get your head. No, David said, who is this Philistine? That would defy the armies of God. He said, this day, wait a minute. Now, now Saul been there for two weeks and God ain't showed up. The army been there for two weeks and Goliath is taunting him every day. And this little 16-year-old boy come and say, today is the day. 16-year-old boy, today is, he said, today I'm going to have your head. And today I'm going to cut your head off. And today you're going to flee from the things of God because you are uncircumcised and we have a covenant with God and God has already said. When the enemy comes in, the spirit will love will stand against him. The enemy of God has already said, a thousand may fall on my side and ten of my right hand but will not come to me. God has already said, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. God has already said, I'm the head, not the tail. So I ain't got to wait on God. He's already said it. I got to voice my faith right now. I just need to voice it right now. And the moment I voice it, heaven hears it and heaven performs it. Just waiting on us to voice it. Heaven don't care how long it's been. I said, heaven don't care how long it's been. Heaven don't care how sick how sick you've been. Heaven don't care how poor you are. Heaven said, if you voice my word. My word that go forth out of my mouth will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper in the place where I too I have sent it. The voice of faith. It empowers you to command results. All right. Let me show you the scripture. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Jesus on his way to go heal Jairus' his daughter. He ain't thinking about a woman issue of blood. She's not, she not even on his agenda. She's not even on his radar. Come on, come on. Make it plain. Come on, tell it. You know, he's you know, he not thinking about her. He's on the way to heal Jairus' his daughter. He's going on a path directly away from her house. Mark chapter 5 verse 25 says this, and there was a woman which had a flow of blood, this is a different translation, had a flow of blood for 12 long years. Verse 26, who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. But she heard. Verse she heard, she heard. of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. I take sickness out of your midst. Yes. The number of your days you will fulfill. Yes. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, she heard, but nothing happened yet. She, see, nothing happened because she heard it. She got inspired. She got hope. But nothing changed. Huh? Verse 28. And she. And she. And she. She voiced. And she said. If I may but touch his clothes. Maybe God will heal me today. Maybe I can get God's attention 
and I get my healing today. Uh -huh. No. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, Maybe I wait on God long enough, He's gonna hear my cry. No. no. She said, uh -huh. Come on. I, I know it's gonna wait, go do something else. Uh -huh. I know there's a crowd in there. Uh -huh. I know Corona's out there. Uh -huh. But she said, uh -huh. She commanded results. When I, the moment I touch his clothes, even though I had this thing for the last 12 years, uh -huh. even though the doctors gave, hope on, gave up hope on me, uh -huh. even though all my money is gone, the moment I touch his clothes, I'm going to be made whole, to, not tomorrow, but today. The voice of faith does not have to wait on Jesus. The voice of faith. But uh -huh. understand. No, I'm saying this in reverence of the Lord. I'm saying this in reverence. So understand, I'm, I'm reverencing God. All right. But the voice of faith will stop Jesus in his track and make him turn around and get, and get a hold of you. Oh, come on, come on. Come on now. The voice of faith will make Jesus stop where he's on his way to. Turn around and see about you. It ain't about waiting on God. God been waiting on you to voice your faith. To command results. I said in the rest of the world, Lord know what I'm talking about right now. I'm trying to get you to see something here. She heard what you've been hearing. Everybody getting corona. Ain't nothing getting no better. No. She was hearing the Lord said, I make a covenant with you. If you will obey me, I will take sickness out of your midst. I am a Lord that healeth thee. By Jesus' tracks you were healed. Jesus is saying this to him forever. She heard that, but nothing changed until she voiced that. And until she declared, this is the day I receive it. Faith is not future tense. Faith is present tense. As long as you got faith in your future, faith will never work. Faith is present tense. The substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Hope says I'll get it sometimes. Faith says I have it now. Hope says I'll get it sometimes. Faith says I have it now. She declared right now, today is my day. I receive it today. She said, she voiced it. If I touch go, wait a minute. Jesus says, look, look, look what Jesus, what happened when she said that in verse 29? And straightway. And straightway. Immediately. The, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Hmm? And she felt. Remember I said things begin in the spirit realm with your voice and then the feelings will come? Things did not change until she fought, until she did what she, she said it, what she believed. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Notice verse, remember I said, look in verse 13. Now, I'm in verse 30. Now Jesus is on his way to go heal Jairus' daughter. He wouldn't even think about this woman. But in verse 30 it says, and Jesus immediately, mm, knowing in himself, that virtue or power had went out of him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Turn him about in the press. I said, you can get God to turn around from where he is. Right. <laughs> He's on his way to go heal somebody else. All right. But she called Jesus to stop, uh -huh. turn around, uh -huh. and see about her. Come on. Amen. Amen. Huh? So she didn't have, she wasn't waiting on Jesus. Jesus was waiting on her. To voice her faith. Hallelujah. Mm. Immediately knowing that virtue went out of him. So what happens when you touch, what happens when you voice your faith? Uh, 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 it draws on the power of God. To impact 
and bring about changes in your life. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, he, he, Jesus immediately knowing that in himself, virtue going on him, turned about in the presence and said, Who touched my clothes? You weren't even on my radar today. I look at my appointment book, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You weren't even on my appointment book today. How did you get healed when I had no knowledge that you were going to touch me today? Who touched my clothes? Who did that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Who forced their faith? Who are the folks sick? Jairus' the daughter still sick because he ain't got there yet. He's on the way to heal her. But somebody stopped him and said, I ain't, I ain't, you know, look here, I know you're on the way to heal Joyce's daughter, but I got something in my, I, I know something about God that God cannot resist faith. And if I voice my faith, I can get God to, uh, to do it right now. Who touched my clothes? Other scripture says, she, she, he turned around and she told me, the Lord was me that did this. I know you were not aware of anything, but faith always gets your attention. And he told, in verse 34, he says this. And he said, daughter, your faith, your faith made you whole. Not my attention, but it was your faith. It was your faith that, got, that made you whole. You didn't wait until your change came. You created your change. <laughs> you demanded that change. You commanded results today. And I couldn't withhold it from you because I'm a God of faith. Hallelujah. So what is God telling us today? That if you begin to voice your faith and say, I'm a product of Psalms 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High yes. and under the shadow of the Almighty. And I say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. In Him I trust. Surely He shall hide cover me in His fingers, uh, under His feathers, and under His wings will I trust. A thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand on my right hand, but it won't come nigh me. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. No evil shall befall me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He anointed my cup with all of my, uh, my, my cup, my, he anointed my head with all of my cup runs over. And surely, goodness, not corona, goodness and mercy. Healing and prosperity shall follow me all the days of my life because I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yes! Upon the authority of Almighty God, I declare every sickness in this place healed in Jesus' name. I declare arthritis healed. I, care, I command uh, headaches to leave, migraine headaches. Whatever you're suffering with right now, I command by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I command every debt paid in Jesus' name. I command new job opportunities to come. I command new relationships to come. I command wisdom and creativity, insight to come to you in Jesus' name. For brand new businesses, for ministry, wisdom and favor and, 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 and opportunities to come to you in abundance today in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is upon this place right now. Hallelujah. And whatever you voice in this environment, God said, I'll do it today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take a moment, take the next minute, and begin to voice to the Lord your faith. Hallelujah.
this, just go this right now. Just begin right now. Just voice it right now. Don't, I'm not talking about no secret prayer, right? I'm talking about begin a voice right now in the name of Jesus. But you believe God right now today that you receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We declare it by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That whatever you ask right now in this environment is done. But the Bible says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. But he that wavered like a sea of wind, uh, uh, like the wave of the sea driven and tossed. Praise God. But if you're, if, you're, if you're speaking right now in faith and voice that in the name of Jesus, God said, I've already called it done. God says, I've already called it done. I've already called it done. I've already called it done. I've already called it done in the name of Jesus. I've already called it done in the name of Jesus. I've already called it done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Voice your faith. Voice what you believe right now that you receive. You know, hallelujah. The Spirit of God not only believes it, but it speaks it. That's the voice of faith. And I'm declaring right now by the authority of God in Jesus' name, virtue and power is coming forth from the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your faith is creating a new reality in your life right now. Yeah. Your faith is creating a new day in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A new thing. A new world yes. is being created in your life right now through your words. Yes. Voice your vision. Voice your dream. Thank you, Lord. Worship you, Jesus. Yes. We worship you, Lord God of heaven. We worship you, Lord God of heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your anointing that's here right now. You're hovering over this place right now. You're hovering through our Facebook. You're hovering right now through our YouTube. You're hovering through our Instagram and wherever else people listen. To. You're hovering over this place right now. But God, I know you can't, you can't do anything until we speak it and we voice it out. But God, we speak it right now. And we declare it right now by the authority of your name, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Flowing from heaven, creating new realities, creating new things that the eyes have not seen, their ears have not heard, things that have not entered their heart, but you got prepared for them, God. But I thank you for the power of your anointing that is present in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say on behalf of Lord Jesus Christ, that your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole today. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Every hand is bowed, every eyes closed. I have a couple of invitations I'm going to give right now. Number one invitation is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you said, Dr. Craig, I've heard the word of God today, and I believe in God, can I say to you again, that's not enough? Ah, come on. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess before my Father which is in heaven. So salvation does not take place when you believe in God. It takes place when you confess him as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9 says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you're not saved, you're not born again, you say, Dr. Craig, how do I don't know if I'm saved or not? Number one, I ask you this question. If you died right now today, do you have the assurance you go to heaven? That's, that's the key right there. It ain't about being good. The Bible said we've all sinned and come show the glory of God. The Bible said there's not none righteous, no, not one. So our righteousness and our goodness won't get us into heaven. We've got to believe that Jesus died as our substitute for our sins. He did that 2,000 years ago. He did it for you and I because we, because no matter what we did was not enough to satisfy heaven's claim, the justice of heaven. But Jesus died for our sins. He paid the full price so that you and I could be delivered 
from being under the devil's control. And his blood was shed for you and me and then accepted into the judgment seat of heaven. And God declared us because of Jesus' blood, not guilty. It was not because of us, it was because of him. So all you have to do now to receive that is to say, Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died for my sins. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray. And I, I pray for you right now as, you, as, you, as you're listening. And then I'm going to lead you into a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that's in this building right now. But also those that are throughout the world, God, listening on Facebook, listening on YouTube, wherever you're listening right now, God. I'm praying right now for them that their heart become tender, Father. And they'll trust you, God. And even though some of them believe in God, they, but they've never accepted you and confessed you publicly. But this is the day for it, God. Yes, yes. I want you, everyone that's listening to me right now, both on Facebook, but also you that are here present with me right now, let's say this together. And if you've never prayed this prayer before, you definitely need to say it, but say it to the Lord. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe you died for my sins. Died for my sins. I, believe I believe that because of your death, my sins were fully paid for. And as of today, Lord, I receive what you did in my place on the cross. I receive forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Change me. Not because of me. But because of your mighty power. I confess you in my mouth. And I believe in my heart. That you have now risen from the dead. And because you rose from the dead. I can now rise. From dead works. And from the control of the devil. So from this day Lord. I give my heart to you. Now. And forevermore. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise for that. Amen. 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 Now, the second invitation I have is called rededication. And this invitation is for those of you that maybe at one time you love God, but sometimes discouragement can sit in. We find ourselves what we call backsliding or, or doing things we should not be doing and getting out of fellowship with God. But today, you've heard. Jesus said here, though your sins be as scarlet, be white as snow. First John 1 John 1.9 says this, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and God is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse them all in righteousness. I mean, no matter what you've done in your past, no matter how many things you've done that was, like all of us have done, we got away from God, but God says, come back unto me. All you that live in heaven, let me, I'll give you rest. All you got to do is just... You know, confess. Bible says confess, but confess doesn't mean you have to tell God everything you did because you don't know all of that. You can never come up with all that. It just means to acknowledge it. It means to acknowledge it. It means to turn from just what you've been doing to come back to God. And God don't need a whole lot of conversation. He needs, he, the fact, matter of fact, the moment you turn, he said, that's it. That's all I needed right there. Just turn around. And so I want to lead you that are what I would call me rededicate the life of Jesus Christ today. So if that's you today and you're here, then I, then I would like to pray with you right now in the name of Jesus. And let's, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. Let's, let's say this again. Lord Jesus, I give you thanks. No matter how far I've gone away, you are still open to receive me. I confess it. I acknowledge it. And I turn away from living a life I've been living to serving you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all my mind, and all of my strength. Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleansing me of all of my sins and restoring me back into fellowship with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. It, it is just that real. It is just that real with God. Amen. Now, third invitation is this. It's called being filled with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was here, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all the oppressed of the devil. The moment Jesus began his ministry, he said in Luke uh, 4, 18, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
to preach the liver to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, to preach the acceptance of the Lord. But he said, this is scripture fulfill you. He said, but he said he was anointed to do that. But thank God in Acts 1, 8, he says, you shall receive power at the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Now, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, it says that the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. The Bible said, and suddenly came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. That means that the moment you get born again, you become, uh, 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 the, 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 the Holy Ghost becomes accessible to you. He's a gift. The power of God. And everybody that is born again, you now have the right to receive this power in your life. There's two kinds of power. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 1, I think it's verse 12, it says, But if to men, if men of you that received Jesus to them gave the power to become the sons of God, that means the right and the privilege. That means you have a right now to become a son of God the moment you receive Christ. But here in Acts chapter 1, he says, You shall receive power. That's me referring to the power of God, the ability of God to, to accomplish his works in your life. And you can receive that power today. So if you're not, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, then I want to give you the opportunity today to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, when I receive them, now there's, there's different ways you can receive the Holy Spirit. Number one, in Acts 9, 6, 19 and verse 6 says, Paul laid hands upon them and they received the Holy Spirit and spake with tongues. So there's a there's laying on of hands, but also there's a way that you can receive the Holy Spirit. When I received the Holy Spirit, uh, nobody was laying hands on me. I just said, God, if this is real, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. And I remember the power of God without anybody to do it, touch him or anything, came on and I began to speak in tongues. Because speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost is real. It's not, it's not fake news. It's faith news. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is not fake news. It's faith news. That when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, it changes your whole life around. Hallelujah. So if you never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, then I want to pray for you. You said, how, how can I receive those? It's a gift. It's a gift, you know, it's, it's something that the moment you're born again, it's a gift. If, you, if it's Christmas time, you don't give a, your child a gift because how good they've been. The gift is a representative of your heart and your love for them, not how good they've been. That's, that's what you call a gift. And you now have the right to receive the Holy Spirit. So if you're here today and you're there on Facebook right now, you never see the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're gonna let, I want you to bow your heads with me. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to pray that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that is here. Lord, that has never received the gift of the Holy Spirit with the Bible evidence speaking with other tongues. And God, I'm going to pray for them. As I pray for them, just as you did with me, God, there's others that, that afterwards, the elders will pray for them, lay hands upon them. But there's others that are here, God, that have received the Holy Spirit just as we're speaking. And we pray for them right now. So God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, that those that are here that have never been filled with the Holy Spirit, let them right now receive the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. Holy Spirit, you said those that ask will receive. And so I'm praying right now that the moment we ask today, no matter if they're on Facebook or they're here in this audience right now, every person I feel with the Holy Spirit will receive him right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray right now. For them. Now, if you have never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, then you that are filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to follow through with me in this place right now, okay? I want you to follow through with me right now. And you, but you have never received the Holy Spirit, whether you're on Facebook or whether you live with me right now, I want you to pray this prayer right now, and then we're going to receive the Holy Spirit right now. Let's say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the precious gift of salvation. And you said you would give the Holy Spirit. To everyone that asks. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that I receive the power of the Holy Spirit into my life. And you said when the Holy Spirit come, that you would also give me the utterance to speak with other tongues. So I'm praying that as when, when Apostle Craig speaks, that, 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 that your living water and your living power will flow from my belly and enable me to speak in an unknown tongue, powered by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Now, now, I want everybody right now that's with me right now, and then you that have never been filled, I want you to do this right now too, but you that are filled, you follow through with this also. I want you to lift your hands right now, 
and I want you, no matter, don't try to say anything in English right now, or in your known tongue. I want you right now, just begin to just start praying in the spirit. And, and just begin to speak out, just, just give voice to whatever comes. Right now, the name, all of you that are here right now, just follow through with this. Just open your mouth and begin just right now to start speaking. This is the voice of faith speaking right now. And the power of God, Rama Rama, open your mouth. Some of you is refreshing that you're receiving. Some of you are receiving refreshing of the Holy Ghost. Just open your mouth and just whatever comes out of your lips right now. Shalama Sandola Lama Haromo Kushanda La Lama Ho. Lamba Ramokushandelia Mura Mahasiki and the Morama Kasandelebo. That's why I come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Sholama Rama Kushanda La Lama. For some of you is refreshing. Some of you get refreshed. Some of you get refreshed in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is refreshing you. You get refreshed in the power of God. Lora Mama Rama Kasanda. Come on, open your lips, open your mouth. And just begin to speak it out. Give voice. Give voice. Give voice right now. Shorla Maharaba. Yela la Marama Sandola Marama Kurama Hasanda Lela la Boraba. Yela la la Moraba Sando. Come on, come on, come on. Rama Hasonda Lela Bora Mahasakodo. Yela Morama Rabi. Yela la la. Come on, come on. Yela la Morama Kasanda Lela Yomurama Kasanda Lela la Bo. Rama Rama Kurama. Yes, Jesus. That's it. Just open your mouth. Just open your mouth. Just open your mouth. Just open your mouth. Rama Sandola la la mora maka sandola la mora maha sakidi. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now, this is what happens. You've received the Holy Spirit by faith. You've exercised your faith in speaking. What you do now all this week, take at least five, ten minutes to do that. And just keep speaking. And what you're going to see is each day that you do that, it's going to get stronger and stronger. When I first started speaking in tongues, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking through me in tongues, it was like, dad, dad, dad. That's about all I had. Dad, dad, dad. Dad, dad, like a baby. Dad, dad, dad. But you know, I was in. <laughs> I was in. And the more I spoke, the clearer it got, and the more words would come. Are you following? The Bible said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaks mystery. So don't try to understand it. It's a, it's a spiritual language that communicates directly with God. But then also, many times the Holy Spirit will give you information as you're praying in the spirit. So, so every day, and when I do that, when I pray this for a lot of times, I have my phone or a notepad, and I write down what, what the Spirit of God is saying sometimes. Because things just start coming to, oh, oh yeah, mm, yeah, that was good. Like, bah, bah, bah. Are you following? Because it's, it's, it's communication with God. So what you do is, um, is you continue on a daily basis, whether it's five minutes or ten minutes, whatever there, make it stronger as it goes on. You do it every day and watch and see how you are filled and you're refreshed. And then watch and see as you speak. Because, see, like, what the Holy Spirit does when you speak in tongues, it translates, transfers you out of the natural into the spiritual realm. And all day long, you become more spirit conscious. Because you're starting your day off spirit conscious and not natural conscious. And that's why I say you do it every day when you start your day off. And you'll see what's going to happen. Amen. Come on, give God some more praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And my final invitation is called church membership. Can I say that I am church is the bomb? Yeah. <laughs> it's the bomb, amen. And, 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 and one thing that God said in the book of Jeremiah, he says that I will give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's the job of a pastor. I mean, everybody needs a pastor. Amen. amen. Praise God. You know, I was raised on a ranch, and, and so uh, and we had certain horses there that we took care of. They, they, they were corralled. We made sure that their, uh, that, their, that their feet was taken care of, made sure there was a veterinary taking care of them and make sure they got all the shots and like that. They were taken care of. And you could tell the difference between them and sometimes we would come through another way where you see some horses, what they call wild horses. Man, they feast all, you know, all chipped and split and things like that. They, you, know, you can see the bones and stuff because there was nobody taking care of them. So you could be a wild Christian or you could be a, a corralled Christian in the church, amen? And see, I'm a pastor, praise God, someone that's going to that's gonna feed you with knowledge and understanding. 
ain't going to be no spiritual bones showing, glory to God. Make it, pass it out in the well. I listen to them all the time. Pray God, they're feeding y'all some good filet mignon. Glory to God. Good, good, good meals in Jesus' name. So you, so you need a good church. It's, you, know, uh, you know, like I said, I teach on Facebook all the time. But Facebook and, and things does not take the place of a good church. Well, you got good fellowship with people. So I want to say to all of you that are here and you that are on Facebook right now, uh, uh, and that is that, you know, this church is a great church. And see, some of you maybe say, Pastor Craig, how can I be there? And I'm not, and I, I'm not, I don't live in Phoenix, wherever there. Well, see, the thing is, uh, thank God for Facebook and thank God that Jesus, his church is not four walls. Uh -huh. Are you following me? Yes. That you that are watching on Facebook and many of our I am members, you watching my, you watching right now on Facebook and your I am members, you are just as more than much of this meeting as we are because these four walls it does you know it does not mean it's the fact that you are pastoring, you're being pastored. Amen. You're following me? by Pastor Allen Noel and then myself. I teach uh, yo, I teach every morning now at uh, on, on, uh, at, at uh, eleven o'clock. Uh, Tuesday through Friday, so you getting you get my teaching, you get Pastor Allen Noel teaching. Hey Amen. You getting teaching here and teaching there and teaching. I'll I, I be listening to all y'all, all y'all. Got, got teaching everywhere. Praise God. Plenty of word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Plenty of word. Praise God. And so the whole goal is this: is an opportunity for you to become a member of this congregation, this church. A place where you know we got MTI, we got discipleship training coming on. This church is a training development church. Amen. Designed to, to teach you the word of God, to grow you in the things of God. So if you're not a member of this church today, and you even if you're on Facebook, praise God, you said, Dr. Craig, I want to become a member of this church. You can become a part of our e-church. Amen. I call it sometimes an i-church, meaning international church, praise God. And, and I want to welcome you today to I Am Ministries. I Am Church, praise God. Uh, uh, again, to become an integral part of this ministry. Everything, even though you're not here physically, everything we do, everything we do, you get accounted for it. You're partnering with us, both as part of but also as members of this congregation. And so I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to I Am Church. Amen. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you, pray a prayer over you right now. I'm, I'm going to, by faith, any of you that are here right now, you said, Pastor, that's me you're talking to. I want to become a member of this congregation. And then what you can do afterwards, you can uh, have the other, however, however after and Pastor Alan Noel instruct you. Uh, as far as make sure you got your name and things like that, yeah, you can do that. But if you're on Facebook, just message, just message us. Whether you, which, no matter which page you're on, they'll check it out afterwards and message. I want to become a member of I Am Church. And either myself or Pastor Alan Noel will be in touch with you and we'll make sure that you we follow through with you on those areas. Amen. Praise God. But I want to pray for all of you right now that are not a member of this church. You said, Pastor, I want to become a member of I Am. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the church worldwide. That your church could not be contained in four walls. We thank you for the fellowship we would have within these four walls, God. And for the members of, of I Am Church Universal, Father. And Lord, I ask and I, on behalf of myself, my wife, Pastor Alan Noel, we receive every person that desires and senses a, a, a connection with us here at I Am Church. And I pray for them, God. Even as Elijah did with Elijah, that the same spirit that is on me that's on, and my wife and Pastor Alan Noel will now be transferred in double portion to each one. I'll ask God that that same spirit, that same anointing that's on us will be upon every member of this congregation, both here local and around the world, that's a part of this vision. We give you thanks for it, and I, and I speak favor on their lives, I speak increase in their lives, and I speak the same anointing on this ministry. On them. And God, we commit to them as pastors and apostles to teach them the word of God, to feed them with knowledge and with understanding. So that when we all stand before you, Jesus, we will hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. To you, Father, we ascribe all the glory and the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Give a lot of hands up for all the good people. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Now, hallelujah. That's been a great... Y'all yeah, enjoy the word today? Amen. You have the voice of faith. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm encouraging you. Like I said, I woke up that morning. I didn't plan on coming. And the Lord said, go teach this word. And so that word is from the Lord. I'm, I'm taking it myself. I'm going to listen to this teaching too. Over again. Because it's something from God. God's out you to teach this. Because this is going to make some change in people's lives. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want the notes, 
I didn't have time. Lots of time I sent notes out, but I didn't have time to send no notes out this time. If you want the notes, uh, let me know. And I'll t- probably, cause we'll be leaving back, going back to Vegas today, and I'll get those notes probably sent out to you tomorrow for you that want the notes, and I'll get them sent to you. Amen. If you're not on my note list, get, uh, uh, get with Pastor Allen Noel and give, give me your, your email, and I'll make sure I, I put you on my daily, my daily notes list. When I teach on Tuesday, when I teach on Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock, uh, I'll put you on that list too. You get those notes every day. Because every time I teach, I like, I'm a teacher, I like, I like following through with notes and stuff like that. So if you're not on my list, on a daily, if, you don't get my, if you're not on my list, get on my list with Pastor Allen Noel. Or if you're on Facebook, message me. Give me an email address and I'll get it to you. And that way you can follow us every day. Amen. Praise God. And also, amen. So it'll be good. Amen. So praise God. Now, let's prepare to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, you know, when I first, years ago, when I first started I, I, I receiving tithes and offerings, they used to always say, it's time to pay our tithe. You can't pay your tithe. What do you, you pay something that you, that you, uh, that you owe. Uh-huh. You have to pay your tithe. Tithe is not to support the church. What? No, it's not. Tithing, you know, God took the children of Israel for 40 years, and the Bible said that their clothes didn't wear out. He did it for 40 years, even their shoes were out. So God can do it supernaturally. But tithing really is God says, okay, I need some kind of way to connect with you so that I can get involved in your financial life. And if you read the scriptures, <clears throat> whenever men and women sacrifice of themselves, and gave it as a worship to God, God always spoke. That's right. That's right. So tithing is not a payment that we have. It is our worship. It, what, what tithing says is, God, this 10% I'm presenting to you as worship, acknowledging you, God, that you the one gave it all to me. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you following? In other words, you know, so it's, it's not gratuity. It is not paying anything. It is worship. It's worship. Like people say, do I have to tithe? No, you, you just get the tithe. Tithe is an opportunity. Tithe is not a duty. Tithing is an opportunity to get to, 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 to have an, an instrument in a vehicle to worship God with it. So it's so a worship. It's not a duty. Are you following me? So no, you ain't got to pay your tithe. You get the tithe. Thank God for the opportunity that God has given us a way to, to, to sit and worship unto him. You say, well, why do I give money, a uh, 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 pastor? Because money represents your work, your labor. Amen. Bible says, the Bible says that, 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 uh, that where you sit, wherever man's treasure is, where his heart is at. So when you give God that 10% of your money, you're saying, God, my heart is here. So, uh, you me? So, so, so tithing is a worship. It represents your heart, you know, to God and things like that. Somebody said, well, I give my time. Yeah, you can give, you can give your time, but time ain't got nothing to do with your heart. All right. Come on. Time, time, you give God your time, you just get tired at the end. But, so, you, so, so you should give your time. But time is not tithing. You can tithe your time. Well, I'm going to give my time, you know, tithe to the church. But that is the money. It's, the, it's, it's coming from your sweat and your brow that you worship God with. It represents your heart. You follow me? So, so we don't have to tithe. We get to tithe. And, and it's, it's, God, it's an opportunity for us to get God in contact with our money. It's, it's your faith. And see, that's, and the memory said, you got to make a confession. So you got you to confess, Lord, that I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my God. But I, but I called on the name of Jesus, and you heard my cry, and you led me from the power of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. I, 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 I was out of the world, but now I'm bringing my tithe, Lord, today. And I'm worshiping you with it, Jesus. And I'm worshiping, I remember where I, where I come from. Just a few years ago, I was on them drugs. A few years ago, I was an alcoholic. A few years ago, I was a sinner serving Satan. But look at me now at church on a Sunday morning. <laughs> look what the Lord has done. See, this is a part of tithing. It's, 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 it's remember where you come from and you're worshiping God. God, I didn't have no job. I got a job now. I had no car. Now I got a car now. Look at what you have done in my life. And it's a time of worshiping God. So as we prepare to receive our tithe and offering, and see your offering then, now the offering comes also, it's the seed that you sow. 
And you said, okay, now, God, you said the principle is seed, time, and harvest. So I'm sowing this offering also, God, in, as, as a part of my investment into the kingdom of God to get a harvest. So you said, what's my man sows? That shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. And so today we're believing God with you for a supernatural harvest. And God said, when you bring your time, I said, I will open the windows of heaven. And I will pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive it all. Isn't that beautiful today? How many, how many ready for that, that blessing? Overflowing blessing in your life. So it's, so it's not no duty. Don't get it as a duty. It's not a duty. It is a time of worshiping God from our heart with our finances. Because when God said, I will, this is how I rebuke you about for your sake. That means that devil that's, that had legal right to cause you to be poor and broke, it has to leave now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Everybody say, I am a tither. See, I don't pay my tithe. I'm a tither. I am a tither. Says, I bring my tithes before the Lord and I worship him with him. Amen. So I'm going to pray. And, uh, and, and we're going to receive the tithe. And I know Pastor Al, y'all got, got this wonderful confession. Y'all may I like that confession. I love, I love y'all's confession. Amen. And so, uh, you're going to put all that praise God. There we go. She's going she she to put it up. All right, you're going to put it up. Amen. Praise God. Now, so, so we're going to so we're gonna, we're gonna receive it and then we're going to make a confession, okay? Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just I pray for every person. And God, as an apostle of God, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, I receive the tithe from your people. And I decree over their lives the favor, the blessing, and the increase of Almighty God on their families, on their businesses, on their ministries. May they experience divine health, yes. divine prosperity, and divine happiness and joy unspeakable and full of glory as a result of being tired and putting you first in their life. We give you thanks for it, Thank and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, now, as you do this, for, for many of you that are online and things like that, there's several ways that you can actually give. For you that are on Facebook, if you look, you can look down there and you'll see a, a link. You'll see a link there. You can click that link. You can give by, by clicking the link, or you can, um, uh, depending on which one, we've got several books, Facebook's going on right now, or you can look uh, at I am, uh, I am ministries .org, or For you that are watching on my page there, it's IamMinistries.org, or you can go, or, or for you on my page, it's uh, the cash app is dollar sign, Apostle I Am. But also, for the, uh, for the church here, just, just, well, I'll tell you what, let, 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 let's do the confession first. And then we'll do it, we'll do it okay? So let's, let's make our, y'all ready to make a confession? I like y'all's confession, it's a good confession. Y'all ready to say together? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I profess this day unto you, that we have come into the land, which you have provided for us. That's all right, he defeated in Jesus' name, amen? Praise God. That's all right, amen. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it happened like that, get stuck, amen. Yeah. But that's all right. Let's say in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. I, am blessed. I am blessed. Glory to God. Ways to give, ways to give. You, you got it, Noel? Are we good? There we go. There we go. Let's say this here. Say, as I give, as I give to the kingdom of God, with my tithes, offerings, fresh fruits, and gifts of love, I know the wonders of heaven, blessings, are open for me. I am now blessed to be a blessing with all the financial breakthroughs manifested in my life for the body of Christ. I live in daily expectation of an exceptional life. I confess unsuspecting people go out of their way to use their power, ability, and influence to help me. I believe I receive creative wisdom, insight, and opportunities for my life, my family, my business, my ministry. This is my confession of faith according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the way you can give 
Here we go. For you that are on Facebook, and like that. Okay, I'll wait to get it. Go ahead and receive the time off, then we'll do that at the end, okay? Praise God. But for you that don't, uh, for you that are there, we'll get you some instruction in a few minutes. So go ahead at this time. How they gonna do? Come forward, that they're doing? Just go ahead and come forward in Jesus' name, and we're gonna receive your tithes and offerings. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare yes. favor, insight, yes. and blessing on your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so, you, okay, so fine. okay, for you that are on Facebook, you can, what, what is there, the, the page? I am? Is I am? I am Church Online. I am Church Online. For you that are on uh, uh, Pastor Alan Noel's page, I am Church Online. There's all information about you can give. Uh, uh, also to the local church here. So many of you already know about that already, that are members of the church. Go on there, and you'll be able to give your tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. With this time, you can be seated. I want you all to know that we love you all so much. We're missing you. As my wife said, that, you know, we've just been kind of like in that apartment up there. We go out every now and then. And she said, like she said, she had opportunities to wear her heels today, dress up. Praise God. Instead of just being in the house all the time. But thank God, I decree that the COVID is over in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I declare that the devil hears that and, 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 uh, and solutions and, and medicines in the natural realm are coming forward in Jesus' name. But also we have the supernatural power of God manifesting in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, uh, we'll be coming back. Praise God. We believe in God to continue to get back on target again. But again, we do pre appreciate Pastor Al and Noel and then for the great work uh, he, they're doing and also all the leaders uh, that uh, that have been holding this thing uh, together, and then the members that have been holding this thing together, all this happened because we are a team, and we are a family. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Living the voice of faith. So this time, let's welcome once again Pastor Al in Jesus' name, and and no one else. Pastor Al. Praise God. Amen. 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 Was that an awesome word this morning? Yeah. Amen. So I encourage everyone to go onto our Facebook. We're all going to be sending to you uh, via YouTube. If you don't have Facebook, we'll be sending everyone that word via YouTube. So go ahead and listen to that word over and over because faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. Amen. So go ahead and be blessed by that awesome word. And today we have a special guest today. Uh, she has a special day today. If Miss Teresa can come up, please. Yes. Miss Teresa, yes. come up. <laughs> yes, honey, Do it, girl. Noel, come up, come up here, Noel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. That's a vision of love, my friend. <laughs> so, Noel, she wants to do something for you today. Uh-uh, Noel. Well, you know, I just was saying, I said I just couldn't let the day go by. I said, okay, so technically her birthday is tomorrow, but we ain't all going to be together tomorrow. So I want us to celebrate this woman of God today, because I'm going to tell you, she's a woman of God that she be there for you when you don't even know you need her to be there for you. You know, you ever had a moment when you just wanted some, when you when you just need something right then and there, whatever, she just, she just appears. And she's there. So she, and then she is a woman who is led by God, who is full of wisdom and knowledge, and beautiful and I love you we love you we all love you amen she's also one of the ones who don't complain and you'll call her in the midnight hour and she'll say okay I'm coming so yes. can do that. no matter so what no matter what no matter we, we can call her and say Teresa we need to be there at six o'clock in the morning she's like Albert yep, okay. she'll do it well, she called me Albert are you for real I said yep so you just a bugger boot but she'll still come Amen. No matter what goes on with ministry, Teresa's always there. Always. Sometimes she may run late sometime, or she'll fuss at me, 
But she'll get on me because there's some people that be calling me, fussing on me, and going off on me. And she can do that one because I ain't got to worry about it. I know Teresa still got my back. Amen. That's right. So we know always. that. You mean So we Thank wanted to say we appreciate you. We thank you. Yes. And today, tomorrow, we're going to help celebrate you tomorrow. Yes. We're going to go to your house. She got a new house, y'all, too. Yes. <laughs> God bless her with a four bedroom house. Yes. In the midst of everything that's going what? on, they want to know her husband. She's dealing with some things at home, but God still is a working God. Amen. Yes, God is faithful to what He says He's going to do. She, she, she got her kids in point on point, and she is. <laughs> y'all don't know what this girl been doing. Y'all just have no idea. <laughs> and she still is doing what God told her to do. Amen. Right. Yes. She couldn't just say, you know what, I'm done. I'm stopped, but she's still coming to church every Sunday. Faithfully, okay. K faithfully serving. And, yes. And uh, we're going to show you some things tomorrow. I ain't going to tell you everything, yeah, but God's going to do some things for you tomorrow. Oh, but tomorrow's going to be her birthday. Yes. And we, as a church, we're going to make sure you're taken care of. We're going to make sure your house is taken care of. Amen. 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 Because we do what? Ministry, ministry and, and life, life together. together. We take Amen. care of our own. Amen. That's right. That's, that's a part of ministry. We ain't want just uh, one, one person getting everything. No, we take care of our own. Yes. We we are a family. Amen. amen. We got this a church, but we are a family. Yes, amen. So we take care Thank of you. everyone that comes through this ministry. That's why it's important that we get connected to a church. Amen. That's right. Because we can't if you're not connected to a church, you not we don't know what you're doing. You just out there like Pastor Pastor uh, Apostle Alpha Craig said. You just out there willy nilly. But if yeah. you get connected to someone, we can make sure whatever you need, yes. we can make sure we take care of you. Amen. amen. That's our job as pastors. To make Thank sure you we take care of our sheep. You will not amen. have any bones around here. Amen. amen. <laughs> we'll, 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 get, we'll, we'll we'll get them we'll, we'll get them dry bones be cleaned up and fixed up, and we'll see you all dressed. If y'all, if, if I'm a junior in a suit, anybody can get a suit. If you was up to me, I wear my oh, tennis no, shoes no. and dickies and a t-shirt. That's right, all I be doing. Right. I love my dickies and love my t-shirt. <laughs> I was thug by the nature. Love. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> well, everybody know. Everybody know me. You got me in a suit. Yeah. Some of you doing good, amen. God working on me. Y'all just hey, pray for the pastor. Please, please pray for the pastor. Every now and then I gotta say, okay, Dr. Craig, you might have to come back to Arizona. <laughs> you know. <laughs> people just challenge me all kind of areas. Yes, no, no, because sometimes you be out going out of the world sometimes, and you know. Very good. Yeah, sometimes I gotta take these glasses off, like, okay, you think I'm a little something. Let's, 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 let's see. I mean, I've been saying. I, mean, I know I need glass, but sometimes people be telling me because I'm, I'm like I'm a little soft with some glasses on. I'm like, okay, what? Let, let, let's let's not get it twisted. I'm passed out, but I'm passed out. I always been passed out. But I love people, but you mean so God is working on me. God is working on everyone. On but so, but we go back to Miss Teresa. Yeah, you mean? Is this about your? So everyone, we gonna say happy birthday to Miss Teresa. Happy I'm, 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 I'm let the the songstress. Oh no! Y'all ain't gonna set me up, y'all. I can't believe y'all let me see. Song on Facebook Live a couple weeks ago. I don't care how much the Spirit of the Lord hit, he didn't hit me with the spirit of, of singing. Y'all should have stopped me or helped me out or something. I said, I can't believe y'all let me do that, so no, I'm not. Okay, I'll start it out then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Teresa. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Do you want to say something real quick before we go? No. Um, just God bless you guys. I love you guys all. You know um, my whole heart. Um, and I just thank you for being a church, being a good church, being a place to where you can find comfort and love and inside and out. So I just appreciate everybody here. Amen. Thank you. And can I say that word that Apostle delivered today, she been walking in that for, for many years. And tell them, can we tell them how old is you, girl? Tell them how old you are. Y'all ain't going to believe it. I'm going to make her say it. Yes, all right. How old are you? I'm 56. Honey, please. Y'all better shut your mouth. Amen. 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 All right, well, Pastor Sandra, you go ahead and dismiss us. Amen. <laughs>